Hi everyone, I'm Miss Anish from the Monrovia Public Library and I have a book to share with you today called Dragonfly Kites and this is by Thompson Highway. Joe and Cody lived in the far north. Their summer home was a tent near a lake. There are hundreds of lakes in northern Manitoba, which is in Canada, so they never stayed on the same one twice. The lakes had beautiful islands and forests and beaches and clear water with no people. There were just Joe and Cody, their papa and their mama, and Cody's little dog, Utsi, who was almost a person. There you go, there's, there's Utsi. While their parents caught fish, the boys would think up games with made up toys. They would take a long thin stick and name it John. They would name another stick Mary. They would name a stone Bobby. Another stone would be called Nancy. They would put John and Bobby and Mary and Nancy in a circle with all the other sticks and stones they named. They would talk with their new friends. They would sing and dance. They would even sleep with the sticks and stones and make them breakfast. There they are in their tent. One summer, Joe and Cody made a pet of a baby arctic tern. They called him Freddy. Another summer, their pet was a baby loon named Sally. Sally wasn't very good at walking, but she swam well. There are their birds. The boys named the squirrels and the rabbits and the chipmunks that ate from their hands. They even had names for the ants. They once had two baby eagle friends. They named one Migisu, which means eagle in Cree. The other they named Wagisu, which doesn't mean anything but rhymes with Migisu. There's Migisu and Wagisu. You see Utsi? Dragonflies, but the dragonflies were their favorite pets. You see the dragonfly on the flower? They caught them in a net as the dragonflies flew by the tent. They took pieces of thread from their mother's sewing kit and tied one and gently around the middle of each dragonfly. Joe and Cody held, held on to the other end of the thread and let the dragonflies go. See, that is how they become dragonfly kites. They flew. The brothers ran along behind them. Utsi ran too, jumping and barking. There we go. And there's Utsi. Brothers followed their magic kites through the meadows, past the trees, down to the water, 
and all along the beach they ran and ran until the sun began to set. Then they let go of the strings and waved goodbye to the dragonflies. Do they let them go at the end of the day? Because the sun is setting. It was time to go to bed. In their dreams, the boys still ran behind their kites. They ran down the beach and into the water. They hopped from wave to wave. They bounced over islands and leaped over forests. The dragonflies soared high above at the end of long, long strings. Joe and Cody dreamed they jumped so high that they didn't come down. Off they flew with their dragonfly kites into the golden pink of the northern sunset, laughing and laughing until it was time to wake up. Thank you everyone. I hope that you enjoyed the story about dragonfly kites. I'll see you next time. Bye!